Gaussian Smoothing Filter The Gaussian Smoothing Filter, or Gaussian Blurring Filter if you'd rather, act as a low-pass filter. To make it simple, low-pass filters aim to remove noise from our image, but in doing so also blur out all the detail of the texture. The purpose of this technique is similar to the mean filters, but it exploits a different filter matrix in order to obtain a smoother result. The filter matrix is also called kernel, and in this case we are using a kernel that imitates the shape of a bell curve. This means that basically the farther the neighbor is, the less it will count on the overall value, computed as the arithmetical weighted mean of the current pixel and his neighborhood. We obtain our kernel by simply applying this Gaussian distribution function to a small range of values, that then get mapped to a matrix of integer values. We can visualize the value response with this graph that I designed for you. The y value of the blue point represents the weight of a pixel, and the x value represents the offset of the pixel of the neighborhood. So, as I said before, the farther the neighbor pixel is, the less it will count. Actually, pixels that are too far will not even count. Also, we can see the red curve that shows the entire function defined in a continuous domain. By the way, continuous stands for infinite domain. In this graph, the sigma, called O because I'm dumb but I don't know how to write Greek letters on this awesome software, express the degree of smoothing. In particular, twice sigma values we will obtain a similar result to the mean filter due to the fact that now all the weights will be similar. This implies a weighted mean that is really close to the mean computed by a mean filter. After all of these, we need to come up with something that approximates the behavior of the function just explained. So we define a filter kernel like this matrix. As you may see, the matrix assigns high value to close pixel and low values for far pixels. Just a quick clarification that may be useless to most of you, Sigma stands for standard deviation, a mathematical operator that expresses the amount of variation of the values in respect to the arithmetical mean that we are considering. To make it simple, high standard deviation means that values are spread over a wide range. Low standard deviation means that values are always really close to the mean. So, to accurately represent the smoothing of high sigma values, we need bigger matrices, otherwise we will obtain a filter that acts as a box filter. We apply this filter matrix in convolution. So, we take pixel per pixel and the relative neighborhood defined by the dimension of the filter matrix, and then we compute the weighted mean of the values. For instance, if we have the pixel with value 42 and his neighbors defined like that, we will compute the weighted mean like that. As you may see in the code, I choose a different approach due to the fact that using a filter matrix can be tough, because we need to recompute the matrix every single time that the variance change. In fact, this time around, I used one of the approaches explained in the box filter video. I apply a function to every single pixel of my neighborhood. This is more flexible, because using a function does not need extra memory to store a matrix and is less computationally expensive than recomputing the matrix at every sigma parameter variation. This implementation is not actually a perfect Gaussian smoothing, but is best known as fast Gaussian smoothing, because we are smoothing only considering my neighborhood of the y-axis. If you wish to, you can implement a second pass, as in the previous video, to add up the smoothing also on the x-axis. But this will result in a pretty expensive Gaussian algorithm that might be excessive most of the time. The result of fast Gaussian is better and faster than the one obtained with a mean filter. What are you waiting to implement this filter? If you want me to provide an accurate Gaussian filter, I may do a video about it. But bear in mind that it might be too computationally expensive for a real-time application. And also, it's fairly easy to implement starting from this code base and using my previous video as a reference. As you can see, the result is stunning. We obtained the best blurring technique for real-time computer graphics with one simple for loop by exploiting the power of math. I'm done for today and in the next video we will take a look at the Onsharp masking technique to make our scene image crispier. But up until next time, cheers!